Uh, this is Google Kickstart 2020 Run B. This is um, some programming competition they started recently. Uh, it's supposed to be relatively easy problems. Um, I have not done this set of problems before, even though the contest happened a while ago. Um, so let's get into it. Hopefully I can uh, solve these. All right, so we're going on a bike tour through Switzerland, and we have n checkpoints, and they all have a height. I see. And it's, uh, we want to find the number of inner local maxima. So that is uh, easy. Um, right, just go into the array and check uh, whether each element is uh, bigger than the thing around it. Um, and actually, be the input format. I assume it's n, and then the uh, yeah, that's what it is. And then the list of numbers, and we just want to go. We just need to check um, every element in the array if it's bigger than its two neighbors, uh, and not not the first and last element, right? Just the intermediate ones. So starting i at one, and uh, ending i when i plus one is right. We want i plus one to be in the bounds. That's what this check. It's the right way to think about this check. Okay, so that was problem A. Uh, let's do problem B. Uh, now we're traveling by bus. Uh, the bus routes only run every x days. I see. How late can you finish and still solve it? Um, so this is probably a good problem for binary search. Uh, right, we want the maximum number such that like this Boolean condition holds true. Um, so yeah. Again, have n and the list of no n and d in the list of x's. Sure. If it is possible to do it in this number of days, uh, so, it's, so we want the largest. So the answer is at least that many days. Uh, otherwise, the answer is at most that many days minus one. Um, so that means that we should add a plus one here. Right, and the way to think about that is if low is zero and high is one, then we, do we want mid to be zero or one? If mid was zero, then we'd either go to zero, one, so this is an infinite loop, or uh, negative one, zero, which doesn't make any, or zero, negative one, which doesn't make any sense. If mid is one, then we either go to one, one, or zero, zero, which is what we want. Um, Yeah, accidentally. 
ですが。Okay, so we want to round up start to the nearest multiple of、uh, xi.、Um, If you're already at a multiple, then you're allowed. Okay. Uh, like waiting for the whole next bus if you got there, like on a day when the bus ran. But there's no need to do that.、Um, so yeah, we do a binary search、uh, on the answer, and then we just need to check if a given answer works or not.、Um, and we can just sort of do that by simulation. Yeah, simulation, I guess you'd call it.、Um, so you just wait for the next bus, you know, for each of the、uh, end buses. Um, and the bug that I had was that if you're already at a multiple of xi, then you don't need to wait at all.、Um, but if you're not at a multiple of xi, then you need to wait for the next multiple,、um, which is this. And this is the reason for that.、Um, and this is the standard binary search. And we thought about whether or not to put a plus one here. And、uh, it turns out we did need to. So that's that problem.、Uh, a little bit of path decoding. What's going on here? We have a big grid. Ten to the nine by ten to the nine. I see. And you can repeat、uh, programs, so we probably need to like expand this out or something. Yeah. So given a position, determine the、uh, the final position. We're given a sequence of moves to do. And it starts off.、Uh, So it's off at one one, right? So moving north, the axis around to、uh, the bottom row. Okay,、um, and the length of this thing is、uh, up to two thousand. And the point is, these could be very heavily nested, right? If you have like nine 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 nine, nine you know, you can go a lot of squares. So in test case one, you're just supposed to sort of brute force it.、Um, in test case two, you need to be a little bit smarter. Um, so what we're going to do is like for every parenthesis pair, we're going to calculate、um, the coordinates that it takes us to, and then we can just multiply instead of running all the instructions. And、uh, 
that will take us some exponential time to uh, to like linear time. Um, yeah, the parsing here is slightly annoying, I guess. So the valid characters are uh, north, east, south, west, and then this weird parentheses thing. Is that we're at the ending of parentheses, in which case you want to go up one level. Uh, turn.
what was kind of the nine. Let's get cut over well. So what's going on here? So So this is what this function does. Um, set up parse so that like we can recursively do this. Um, and so that's why we stop when we hit an unmatch close paren or uh, the end of the string. Um, so that's what this function is doing. that my parsing code is actually correct. I guess we'll see. Uh, four, four, one. It's an annoying zero indexing thing. Three, one, three, nine, 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 five. this that's a good sign okay if it parses the bottom example it probably works yeah so how does the parser thing work um 
So these cases are easy, uh, right? If you get a normal character, then you just parse the rest of the string and you add on whatever the action of that character is. Sample fail. Compiler. Let's see what the compiler was. Uh, Do we not know about, maybe that's like a C++ 17 thing. saying. Uh, this case, relatively easy, post the rest of the string and then do, you know, add on the appropriate movement action. Uh, this is the interesting case where we have a number, um, so it should be followed by a parenthesis. We should parse out some part until the closed parenthesis. Um, right, so we should have hit a closed parenthesis. Still failed the compiler. where you can do their deconstruction. It's really nice. Look at how gross this is. Anyway, um, if you have a number, you uh, read until the close paren and uh, figure out what number you're multiplying by, and then read the rest of the string, and then you multiply you know, the first part by the number, and you add in the second part. Uh, and you leave off you know, wherever this rest of the string left off. Right, so this handles um, recursive parsing. Uh, right, because we're actually calling the same function. Um, right, so in this example, you know, we have a two, so we're in this case, and then we start parsing from here, and then we have a three, so we're in this case again, and then we start parsing from here, and we stop once we hit here, uh, and now we're here for the three, and now we parse the rest of the string, which is all of this, uh, and then we add together uh, three times this stuff, plus this stuff, and that, then we return from this close paren, and now we multiply all of that by two, and we post the rest of the string, which is nothing, because we're at the end, so we add on nothing, and so two times this inner stuff is the answer. Um, so this is the way that this, uh, this parser works. Um, I don't know, there's maybe a nicer way to do that or think about it, but this is the way that I'm used to doing it, so that's what I did. Uh, and it looks like it worked, finally, once we got rid of all those compilers. Uh, be nice. Hopefully they add a new version of C++ soon. Um, and I guess this annoying case is like a um, one indexing error. Uh, maybe we could have like zero indexed the coordinates instead. I don't know. Yeah, that probably would have been better. We should just add plus one, plus one, instead of adding one. Like, we should really think of it as that we're starting at zero, zero. So, um, because of my one indexing, I had to add that weird line. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that's it. And um, it's everything's mod a billion because uh, this wraparound behavior. Right. Like this. Uh, so that's that problem. All right, our last problem. Uh, so what's going on here? More robots. Uh, we want to navigate around a hole in the arena. So we have a grid, um, W by H, 
and we want to get down to the bottom right, and we cut out a rectangle with the grid. Uh, okay, so if we're all the way to the right, we just move down. If we're all the way to the bottom, then we move right, and we either uh, we randomly move right or down. I see. We want to find out the probability that we pass. W and H are up to 10 to the 5, which is uh, kind of large. Um, and so the point is that that's actually maybe a bit too large to do brute force with, um, or even DP. <laughs> Uh, hmm. On the other hand, this is not so complicated, right? There's just, uh, what are the, what's the actual input? The size of the grid, um, and then the coordinates of this uh, rectangle. Right, so if it's a 3 by 3 grid and we check out the middle square, uh, I guess there's a 50% chance that we try to go through the middle and die. So this is the uh, sample case. So probability one we get to here. One way to get here now is two one one. All right, so this is the crucial point: is that there's like four paths we could have taken up to this middle diagonal, and two of them go through the middle square. So there's a fifty percent chance that we die. Um, and then if we don't die, right, there's like one path. Uh, another way to put it is two of the four paths get us to the end. Um, So in general, to get to RC, well, there's two, okay, so to get to RC, we must have walked R plus C steps. Uh, the total number of ways to walk R plus C steps is two to the R plus C, and the number of ways that gets us to RC is r plus c we choose r, what you see, same thing. So I think, um, We have like this grid, and some of it has been deleted. Some rectangular bit of it. Um, These probabilities are not independent. It's a bit annoying. Okay. 
kind of what I wanted to say was this is like the probability you get here, 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 and then take a step in the wrong direction. Um, that's not quite right because uh, there's some like double counting going on there. Right, this rectangular, the whole is actually the same as if instead of just this, um, like this, the top and left edge were the only holes because there's no way to get to the inside anyway, and if you get to here, you're dead anyway. Um, so that might help a little bit. So we can compute the probability that we get to here, or here. Should be the same. Um, how about like here? The probability we get to here, but we don't get to here. Can we do that? So we can have the probability we get to here, and then we die with probability 0.5. Well, I guess these are all disjoint, right? Well, no, because we, if we get to here, then there's a good chance that we then immediately get to here. case it's just a path of length one so we cut out some of the middle and there's no way through So what is the chance that we die here? We need to get four downs before we get two rights.
What are the probabilities here? It's one. Uh -huh. This is definitely a half. <sighs> um, a half times 0.5 is a quarter, so this is 3 eighths. And this is 1 eighth plus 3 sixteenths, which is 3 5 sixteenths. And. Okay, that's the right answer. Yeah, so this is the slow way of doing it. This would pass um, test case one. This is uh, like W times H, but it won't pass test case two. Uh, right, so the point here is like P of C equals um, uh, basically. run that, but like PRC is zero for the holes. is actually just uh Choose one. Yeah, but you get plus one because this one doesn't count. Okay.
Hmm. I might just be able to make like a cut through the If you get to any square below the hole, then you win. If you get to any square to the right of the hole, then you win. So we can just find some uh, independent set, or some like non-interacting squares like that, and just add up their probabilities. There's this issue of the edges, though. As long as you're not actually on an edge, this is true, I think. But if you are on an edge, the basic idea. So we have our big grid. We have some piece of it. It's all cut off. And so we must either get to this square or this square or this square to win. The claim. And those squares are independent, so we just want to add up the probability of getting to each of those squares. Um, so these ones, it's just this. This one is a little bit trickier because it's actually on an edge. Uh, right, so the point is, you like can't take more steps down. down here though. It's kind of a weird solution. Okay. This is actually going to work with floating point.
Hmm. Maybe we can keep this. You do this is so important. It should not be hard.
squared. Seems like a good idea. Okay.
0.13.25, that's correct. That is not correct. I see, the whole thing is, um, Case two, one, four, no, one, two, two, one, point two, three, four, point two, just like this. W and H matter at all. Sixty-five. What happened here? Oh, okay. I guess this is the case that W and H actually do matter. You're allowed to add rows to the bottom and to the right, but you can't add solves up or to the left. It's an issue with this. You can't add solves to the right.
put off all this strange doodling. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to pass. I'm worried about floating point error. A little worried about correctness, too. Uh, apparently, it does pass. Okay, um, so what was the idea here? The idea is that uh, if you don't fall in the hole, we're going to pick some set of cells that you have to go through, and that they're all independent of each other, so that you can't, you know, you go, you go through exactly one of them, is what I'm saying. Um, and so the, the set of cells that I've chosen is start from the bottom left of the hole, and then the one down to the left of that, down to the left of that, all the way until you reach the left edge. Um, the reason that you need to go all the way until you reach the left edge is that some like weird things happen at the bottom of the grid, right? This is like more likely. Uh, but you can add stuff to the bottom of the grid, like no problem. Right? Once you reach here, you're home free anyway, because you're below the hole. Um, and similarly, over on this side, uh, the cell to the top right of the hole, or the cell to the upper right of that, you must hit exactly one of those cells. Um, and again, we can add, basically until we hit the top of the grid, there you use, we don't want to hit the right side of the grid, there's some issue with that again, but we can add cells to the right, or columns to the right, so that we don't hit the right side of the grid, because once you get to the right of the hole, you're home free. Um, and so yeah. So we have this disjoint set of cells that you must go through exactly one of them to avoid the hole. So the answer is just going to be the sum of the probabilities that you get to each one of those. Um, and so what is the probability that you get to a given cell? Uh, it's this. Um, and so why is that? Well, so to get to the cell RC, we must have taken R plus C steps. And R of them must have been uh, down, I guess, right, row steps. And C of them must have been column steps. And so the number, the probability of that happening is the number of ways to choose R of the steps to be rows divided by uh, the total number of ways to, to choose a path of length R plus C, which is just 2 to the R plus C, because every step you have a choice of going right or going down. Um, and so the probability of like getting to each of our sort of disjoint points is this thing. Um, so that's what I'm computing here. Uh, I was confused about how to do it with floating point, um, but logs is a good idea. Yeah, thanks to this guy. Uh, right, that avoids floating point issues. Um, and like the actual, right, like this value is very big and this value is very big, but the ratio is some like reasonable number. Um, and so we just need, we can use this to compute the log of it uh, to some reasonable precision, and then x that, and like, anyway, these intermediate, like, if we just x this, it would like be infinity, That's, it would be too big. But like, the total combination here should be fine. Um, so anyway, we compute uh, the log of n factorial for each n, we use the fact that our or I guess n choose k equals n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. This is a very good thing to know. Right? And so in log terms, We just pre compute. Right, in near time. Um, so, I mean, the point of this formula in Pokemon Contest usually is that you can compute n choose k in like linear, you can pre compute it sort of in linear time because you just need to pre compute the factorials. Um, so that's basically what we're doing here. Right, whereas if you pre computed like all of the n choose k values, that's like n squared time because right? there's each pair n and k. Um, so yeah, if you compute the factorials, um, 
write down this formula, and then uh, change the coordinates to be zero indexed. And then we need to walk, um, really, I guess I should move this part to here. Right, this is like the set of squares um, to the bottom left of the hole. Uh, and this is the set of squares to the top right of the hole. Um, so what is this condition for? Uh, if there's nothing actually... What? Yeah, yeah, so if the hole extends all the way to the bottom, then there's nothing to do here. Um, that's the case where we can't actually add more edges to the bottom because, you know, originally you can't go around the hole to the bottom. So if we add more edges, that would break that. Um, so if the hole extends all the way to the bottom, then just ignore this part. Similarly, if the hole extends, uh, I guess this is all the way to the right, then ignore this part. Um, there's no way around it. Uh, and... You know, just do these, you know, add, add together these probabilities um, until you reach, uh, I guess, the left edge and the top. Um, so yeah, that's the problem. The coding, I mean, it's really a math problem, right? The coding is not bad, but uh, I don't know. It took me a while to think through it. Okay, uh, so that is um, Kickstarter 2020 round B. Uh, so yeah, try it yourself.